I'm Sylvia Earle, an explorer in residence at the National Geographic Society, founder of an organization called Mission Blue, and a company called Deep Ocean Exploration and Research. Many people wonder, why should I care about the ocean? But here's the thing, the ocean is where 97% of Earth's water is, that with every breath they take, the oxygen is generated mostly by life in the sea. The book called Blue Hope, it includes thoughts that I've gathered from people who have expressed their feelings about the ocean in poems, in, in thoughts, in sometimes pieces of the words that are in music with images that help tell why you should care about the ocean. The ocean got my attention when I was just three years old, I got knocked over by a wave. But I didn't really dive into the ocean using scuba until some years later. It was in the 1950s, and now there are millions of people who do this with a scuba tank on your back, with a regulator in your mouth, to fly into the ocean. The water makes you feel weightless. You can stand on one finger. You can be the most graceful creature in the world, even if you don't feel graceful on the land, in the ocean. You can be like a bird. You can be you know, like a dolphin or a very graceful shark. <laughs> the fish are curious. Sharks are sometimes curious, although usually they pay no attention to a diver. You really don't have to worry about the creatures who live there. We're not on their menu, although a lot of them are on ours. Most people are afraid of things they don't know. So I encourage people to get to know the ocean. In 1979, I had a chance to go deeper than I can go as a diver. And I had a chance to use a system called Jim. It's like a little submarine with arms and legs, a submarine that you wear. It looks like an astronaut suit. Aquanauts using these special diving suits have to protect themselves from increased pressure. I was able to go to 400 meters. It's dark, but it's not totally dark because just as on land, there's some creatures that come out at night like bats and owls. Most of those creatures have some form of making their own light from bacteria, tiny organisms, zooplankton, the tiny crustaceans and, and other little creatures, to big jellies, to fish with lights down the side. Uh, you just see this galaxy of, of life. And I've used about 30 different little submarines to go down where it's dark all of the time. Being in a little submarine gives you the gift of depth to go where you can't go, but to get the gift of time. Living underwater makes it possible to actually huh, stay day and night at a certain area and get to know it. So the first time I did this was in 1970. I've done it now 10 times, most recently in Florida, in an underwater laboratory called Aquarius, where I stayed for a little more than a week with five others, other scientists and observers, who were able to swim outside, use the ocean, the, the sea itself, as a place to conduct experiments. Since the 1970s, think of it. That's the period of time when we have developed technologies and markets around the world for ocean wildlife. I only saw, well, one small shark in my recent stay in 2012 for more than a week underwater. That same area, going back to the 1970s, we should have seen many sharks, but we're so good at extracting them. As a scientist, I've, I have discovered so many things about the nature of the ocean. And it's very satisfying to be the first to do a lot of things, to walk on the ocean floor 400 meters down. But the thing that I think is most valuable from the time that I have been able to be an explorer is that I've been a witness 
to change. An ocean that was full of life, that was a healthy functioning ocean to one that today is, has a fraction of the wild creatures that were there. A few years ago, I was at a conference in Spain and I had a chance to tell the man who started Google Earth, John Hankey, you've only focused on the land. Most of the world is blue. Only about 10% of the ocean has been mapped at all with the same degree of accuracy that exists for the moon or Mars or Jupiter. We're the only creatures on Earth who have the power of knowing, of measuring those changes and changing our behavior in ways that will favor a planet that works for us. Sound Mail Arwima, Jiao Wei Xin, Di Shijian, Shokan Soyo Jemu.